Everybody, Surah Al-Ahqaf, 46, verse 7. Today I have very good news for you about the importance of reciting the Qur'an loud. You must read the Qur'an loud. It's proven scientifically that, na'udhu billah, people who may have a stroke, the only way for them to re regain their speech is to read. There is this man who, he's a li Lebanese, he had very bad stroke. So doctor discharged him from work. He said, you can't work. So he has few kids living in the US. So they called him, they said, dad, come, come. We treat you here better in America. So when he went, they took him to hospital. The doctor was a Jew. So he asked him, are you Muslim? He said, yes. He said, okay. I, as a doctor, Suggest for you to recite the Quran, your Quran, read your Quran. He said, I was shocked that a Jewish doctor is telling me to read the Quran. Guess what? Three months of therapy, he regained his speech. He speaks again like you and me. See the ijaz of reading Quran when Allah says, Iqra. He's not putting burden on you. So, one way to fight <coughs> speech impairment is to recite. That's why recite Quran with your loved ones. In dunya you benefit, let alone in akhirah. So let's recite inshallah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyina wa mulana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Ya Rahman, in this masjid of yours, in this house of yours, in this time of yours, May you forgive us all, Ya Rabb. Grant us rahma, shifa, and grant us peace of mind and happiness, Ya Allah. Ameen. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. We are in Surah 46, not Al-Jathiyah. 46, Surah Al-Ahqaf. Verse 8 now. Am yaquulun aftarah. Not all of you are there. We are in verse 8, Surah 46. We will come back to Surah Al-Jathiyah. For the time being, we do. Al-Ahqaf. Al-Ahqaf. Surah 46. Verse 8. <coughs> also, reading the Quran fights Alzheimer. One way not to forget is to recite the Quran. So Quran, all barakah, all nur. It benefits you even when you don't understand it. أَمْ يَقُولُونَ افْتَرَاهُ قُلْ إِنْ افْتَرَيْتُهُ فَلَا تَمْلِكُونَ لِي مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا تُفِيضُونَ فِيهِ كَفَى بِهِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ قُلْ مَا كُنْتُ بِدْعًا مِنَ الرُّسُلِ وما أدري ما يفعل بي ولا بكم إن أتبع إلا ما يوحى إلي إن 
وَمَا أَنَا إِلَّا نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَكَفَرْتُمْ بِهِ وَكَفَرْتُمْ بِهِ وَشَهِدَ شَاهِدٌ مِّن بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ مِن بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَلَى مِثْلِهِ عَلَى مِثْلِهِ فَآمَنَ وَاسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ وَاسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ إن الله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين وقال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا لو كان خيرا ما سبقونا إليه وإذ لم يهتدوا به فسيقولون هذا إفك قديم وَمِنْ قَبْلِهِ كِتَابُ مُوسَى إِمَامًا وَرَحْمَةً وَهَذَا كِتَابٌ مُصَدِّقٌ لسانا عربيا لينذر الذين ظلموا not good not good لسانا عربيا لينذر الذين ظلموا بتر وبشرى للمحسنين إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون أولئك أصحاب الجنة خالدين فيها جزاء بما كانوا يعملون ووصينا الإنسان ووصينا الإنسان بوالديه إحسانا حملته أمه كرها ووضعته كرها 
وحمله وفصاله ثلاثون شهرا حتى إذا بلغ أشده وبلغ أربعين سنة قال رب أوزعني أن أشكر نعمتك التي التي أنعمت علي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا ترضاه وأصلح لي في ذريتي إني تبت إليك وإني من المسلمين Excellent. Well done. Very good. Alhamdulillah. We go back now to Surah 45, the previous Surah, Chapter 45, Al Jathiyah. What's Al Jathiyah mean? The kneeling. Why it was called the kneeling? You kneel, you just kneel on your knees while standing, like this. This is called kneeling. When you go like this. This is how on the day of judgment, all of us will be on our knees. This is what it means. The day of kneeling. Adhan? Okay. MashaAllah, good to see some sisters I haven't seen for a long time. Few brothers, alhamdulillah, good. Okay. So it's a day where all the creation of Allah will be on their knees in front of His Majesty, God. We will be so scared that day that, of course, we will be on our knees. Now, what, how do Muslims pray? Including Jesus, peace be upon him. Including Moses, peace be upon him. Including Abraham, peace be upon him. How did they pray? On their knees. It's in the Bible. He fell on his knees and forehead. So that's exactly the Salat of the Muslims. That's how the prophets of Allah, all of them prayed. All of them got the same command from the same source. And that's sujood. And in sujood, your knees must touch the floor. In order to avoid this day, this kneeling. So you do kneeling now, you will not have to worry about that kneeling over there. This is why Muslims pray on their knees and the forehead. And in sujood, I need to focus on this. Eight things must touch the floor. Your forehead and nose. Your nose must touch the floor. So two. Your two arms, your two palms, sorry, your two palms, your two knees and your two, your two toes. Eight things. Some people say seven because they consider the nose and the forehead together. We make it clear, we say two so that people get it right. So you see some brothers and sisters, when they do sujood, they put only the forehead. The nose doesn't touch the floor, must. So, this position is the most humbling position. To who? To the most deserving. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we do that, we do it only for God, nobody else. Never bow to anyone. Never prostrate to anyone except Allah. Not even to anyone. I said anyone, khalas, no one. Only the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we do that for Him. Okay. So, 
that day is coming, my dear brothers and sisters, and we reach verse, mashallah, 32. Huh? No, no, everybody will kneel, but our kneeling is out of respect. Their kneeling is out of fear. But everybody will kneel. Oh, to Allah? No, there is no sujood there except the sujood of shukr. To thank Allah. You do sujood to Allah. For them, Allah will say, make sujood in a sarcastic way. They cannot. Because they never did it in the dunya. He's, no, they are unable to do it. Because when he used to tell them to do sujood, which is prayer, they were thinking, oh, what, the, what is this? Look at them. I know. So, alhamdulillah, those who have done kneeling and sujood to Allah, prostration, they fear nothing on that, that day. The others will be so terrified. It is the knee, everybody has to kneel down now. It's not up to you. But there are two types of kneeling. Kneeling of, because you are thankful to Allah, and the other one because you find yourself forced to. But what counts is this kneeling here in this dunya. That's why, my brothers and sisters, there is no worship after death, even if you wish to. You really want to worship God? No. Allah says no. I told you to worship me when you had free will. Dunya, when you are alive. Now you have no free will, you died. Okay, okay God, please, please allow me to pray. No. That's why pray now as much as you can. Yes. Huh? How about? It's okay. For those who cannot, those like you on a wheelchair, it's okay. It's all right. Your sujood should be with this way. The sujood of those who are unable, physically, physically impaired, they cannot. There are many people who are handicapped, cannot even move. So their sujood should be with the eye. With your eye, look at me. With your eye, you cannot even raise your hand. Let's say you are paralyzed, 100%. But you still have to do sujood with your eyes because you understand exactly what I'm telling you. So. That's your sujood, your intention, with your eyes. Now you can do sujood like this, do like this. Allahu Akbar, ruku' a little bit down, sami Allahu liman hamidah, sujood a little bit long. And this is how you do sujood on the chair. When you pray, you do this. You see me all? Yeah, you do this, Allahu Akbar. So you recite Al-Fatiha. Surah, then you do ruku'ah, you bow. Allahu Akbar, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim wa bihamdih, three times. Sami Allahu liman hamidah, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. When you do sujood, you do this. Allahu Akbar. So you go a little bit low, and this as if you are putting them on the floor. But you cannot touch the floor. So how do I know you are in ruku' or sujood? This. Like this. Ha, Allahu Akbar. Ruku'ah. Look at my hands. Where are they? On my knees. Allahu Akbar. This is bowing. Sami Allahu liman hamidah. This is sujood. Allahu Akbar. As if your hands are touching the floor. Clear? Is this clear, inshallah? Please feel free to ask. Don't be shy. This is a good... Uh, Chair, but very heavy. <laughs> Good chairs are heavy. That's why they don't let go, politicians. Because just give me a plastic chair, I'm fine. Takbir. So, huh. Omar? One sign that Allah is pleased with you is to die during Salat. During Salat you die. You die doing the best ibadah Allah created you for, which is prayer, and you died. That's why most Sahaba ask Allah to die either in jihad 
or in ibadah. They ask Allah other while they are fighting an injustice physically or to die while worshipping Allah. Because that's a good sign that He's pleased with you. May Allah give us a death like that. Say, I mean, you're dying, dying anyways. So ask Allah to give you a death like that. Or reading Quran, or going to visit someone for Allah's sake, or in a class like this, or coming to the masjid, or going back from the masjid to your house. Huh? This is very good. Okay. So, we are in verse 32. Everybody, verse 32. Today, verse 33. Who read last week, the brothers or sisters? Brothers read. Okay, tonight, sisters. I start with my sisters here, starting with Azla. 33. How, how was the exam, Azla? Good? Very good. Inshallah, we hear good news. A plus. If we don't get A plus, no problem. B. If no B, C. If not, X, Y, no problem. Alphabets. Where is the problem? A, B, C, D. <laughs> yeah? Listen, it's not worth it to get sad for uh, an exam in the dunya. Do not worry about that, my brothers. Huh? You know, uh, what's his name? This is the role of mothers. I just want to show you what mothers can do when they are really good mothers and they believe in themselves. So you lack sometimes confidence. You know what's his name? Uh, the, uh, the founder of uh, electricity, what's his name? Edison, Thomas Edison. No problem, I, I mean Edison. That's the name I'm looking for. Okay. Thomas Edison. The teacher sent with him a note. Give this to your mom, letter. So, what was the letter? Please keep your son inside the home. He is not good. He is bodo. He is this. I cannot teach him. When she read that, she did not read that to her son. She didn't say, sorry, what are you doing? She didn't say that. He had really impairment in the beginning. So she decided to teach him herself. He became a man, who we're talking about him in the masjid today, right now. But she, she never, she said, okay, I will prove this teacher wrong. Some kids just need a little bit of attention than others, that's all. Every child, I believe, is gifted his way. It's just you need to open that code. Sometimes it's psychological, sometimes it's, he's gifted in another way, but you want him to go to I don't know what. <coughs> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha
اكبر لا لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آت سيدنا محمدا الوسيلة والفضيلة والدرجة العالية الرفيعة وابعثه مقاما محمودا الذي وعدته إنك لا تخلف الميعاد رضينا بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبي ورسول آمين. go ahead أزلام. very good. there is one thing sisters and brothers please understand is that non-Muslims when they mock us throughout history when we say non-Muslims we don't mean Arabs. any anyone who believes in God is a Muslim. Believes him and follows his prophet. For example, in the time of Musa alayhi salam, Moses, peace be upon him, those who believed in Allah and followed Musa, they are Muslims. In the, in the time of Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, peace be upon him, those who believed in Allah and followed Jesus, peace be upon him, and followed his teachings, they are Muslims like you and me. Those who follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, since he is the last prophet, until the day of judgment, including you and me, are what call Muslims. Every Muslim somehow, sisters, brothers, will go through mocking. You need to expect that. You are the same person. Just because you wear scarf, some people are ready to make fun of you. Let's do a social experiment. Let's take one of the sisters. We tell her sister, go sit down in that coffee shop with your hijab. Somewhere in Europe. Some people may give you a dirty look or make fun, or say a word or two. And some may not. But you will remove the hijab, sister, and sit down there. Nobody will even say anything. Same thing. You are tuxedo, or a jacket, and walk in the streets. Wear like a Muslim, and you see how people start looking at you. Especially when you start doing da'wah and calling people to Islam, some people will not be happy at all. And you don't have to do any mistake or wrong anyone or offend anyone. The fact that you are saying there is only one God is already a crime to them. How can you say that? So please understand that. Allah says that on the Day of Judgment, before the Day of Judgment, now, now in dunya, in this world, uh, you will be mocked at. So look at verse 3. He said, And the evil of what they did, meaning those who mocked the Muslims, those who mocked the believers, will appear to them on the Day of Judgment. It will appear to them. All the evil they have done, all the plots, all the killings, all the raping, all the, 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 the disgrace, all the names, the naming, all the, everything they have done taking their resources, taking their money, firing them just because they are Muslim, burning them alive. It happened, sisters, brothers. It happened that people were burned alive just because they were Muslims until today. In Bangladesh, in uh, India now, Kashmir, not seeing the atrocities doesn't mean they don't happen. In uh, what happened, the fear that uh, our Sri Lankan brothers and sisters went through two, three months ago, in Rohingya, Palestine, Yemen, and other places. <coughs> so they will, Allah says, whatever evil they have done, it will appear in front of them. This is what you have done. One more thing, wahaqa bihim, and then they be surrounded, look at it, and they will be encircled with their mocking, meaning they will be mocked at. What goes around? comes around. You did this, you did this to people in the dunya, it will be done to you. Please expect that. That's why you must ask someone to forgive you. If you wronged anyone, ask him or her to forgive you. Otherwise, it will be done. Justice will be done because Allah is just. One of the names of Allah is what? 
the most just. In Islam, you know, if you slap someone with no reason, if he comes to me as a judge and I'm the judge and I verify, did you really slap this man? He says, yes. Okay, slap him same way, the same tone, the same everything. That's justice. Now he wants to forgive up to him. But me as a judge, I will pass that ruling. Umar ibn Khattab did this. And this is what made a Coptic Christian become Muslim from Egypt. He came all the way to Medina because the son of the governor, who was a Muslim, hit this Christian who raced with him. They raced on horses. Christian won. That Muslim didn't like it, so he hit him on his face with his whip. That man knew there is justice. He knows. He already heard that the Muslims are just. So he went to Medina. And he complained to the caliph. Who was the caliph? Umar ibn Khattab. Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anh, with his intelligence, he told this Christian man, stay with us, brother, here in Medina. So he gave him a room to stay and food. And he told him to stay near the masjid. Look at, look at the wisdom. He gave him, like, like the, let's say this masjid, Let's say this house belongs to the masjid. One of the house, guest house. I think you should do this, by the way. <laughs> Yalla, donors, buy one apartment here, one of these houses, and keep it really for a guest, somebody coming, why not? Some masjid is already doing this. Why not, inshallah, it's good investment. Anyways, so the man, when he stayed there, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to hear adhan five times a day. He's going to see real Sahaba, how they pray, how they help. On. So he got impressed. Meanwhile, he did the investigation. Who did the investigation? Umar ibn Khattab. So he called the governor and his son. He did not just call the son. And he verified, did you hit this man? He said, yes. They didn't lie. One thing about Sahaba, they may fight, but they will not lie. They will never lie. So he said, did you hit this man? 